friends, welcome back to lecture 5 in the Stroke Imaging Series. In this lecture, I shall discuss about the role of MRI in subacute and chronic infarct. Let me outline what I will be discussing today. Let me discuss about the imaging features of subacute infarct in T1 weighted, T2 weighted, flare, post contrast. GRE and diffusion weighted imaging. After that, I shall discuss about the imaging features of chronic infarct in MRI. The highlight of the topic will be on the pseudo normalization of ADZ, valerian degeneration, and crossed cerebellar discuses. So let's begin. Subacute infarct, what do you expect in T1 weighted imaging? Three things. One, you can expect hypoindense areas with mass effect. Why hypoindensity? It is due to vasogenic edema. To begin with, you had cytotoxic edema. Now, with the breakage of blood brain barrier, you're going into the vasogenic edema. So, how will it appear? Hypoindensity one. How so the mass effect? You can see the cortical sulci has been effaced. It's not lower seen. It means it is swollen. Hypoindense swollen brain parenchyma. That you can see in T1 weighted images. Now, what else can you see? Look at the image given to you. What do you see here? Definitely hypointensity is there. What else is there? You can see a hypointense area. Hyper means white, bright area on T1 weighted images. So, a rule of thumb is that most of the pathologies in T1 weighted images are appearing hypo, darker. But there are only few causes which bring out hyperintensity. And one such cause is what? The blood. So, this is a hemorrhage. So we know that hemorrhagic transformation, hemorrhagic transformation is a common thing with subacute infarct. Why? Either iatrogenic, you are giving revascularization or bodies attempt at revascularization by forming collaterals. So both these conditions, the blood vessels are leaky and you can get hemorrhagic transformation. So remember friends, hemorrhage has got wide varied appearance depending on its stages and sequences of MRI used. And for, for practical purpose, right now, all you need to know is that subacute stage of bleed will be bright on T1. So I'll be planning a separate lecture on appearance of hemorrhage in MRI. So I'm not going to include that in present lecture. So this is the second imaging feature that you can expect in T1 weighted imaging subacute infa. Now let's move over to the third feature that you can expect. What is it? What do you see in the figure? I can see that there is a hypointensity, yes, within the gyre, but more importantly, I am seeing what bright areas, hypointense areas lining the cortex. So, what is it called? It is known as the cortical laminar necrosis or pseudo necrosis. So, what there are two questions that you should ask yourself. How does it appear? We already so how is it? bright areas lining the cortex. Now second question, why does it appear? So that we are going to answer. So there have been theories previously that this brightness is due to hemorrhage but that theory has been refuted. Newer, uh, newer theory has been put forward which shows that this bright area is due to deposition of what? Lipid laden macrophages. Lipid laden macrophages. So why do you get lipid-laden macrophages? We said that in subacute stage, attempt of collateralization. The blood, form, blood vessels form the very leaky. So RBC will come out, you get hemorrhagic transformation. You can get lipid-laden macrophage just coming out. So what is the peculiarity of this lipid-laden macrophage? How will lipid appear in T1-weighted image? Lipid will appear bright on T1-weighted images. That is why you are getting bright areas outlined in the cortex. So we have answered two questions. How does it appear and what is it due to? Next question that you should know is when will you get cortical lamina necrosis? That's also very important. So it is said that as early as 3 to 5 days. So you can get it as early as 3 to 5 days. And it can be also seen after 2 weeks. So cortical lamina necrosis can be seen in both subacute stage and chronic. Subacute stage is between 48 to 7, 2 weeks, sorry, 48 to 2 weeks. And anything after 2 weeks, it's a chronic stage. So, 
both in subacute and chronic stage, you can get cortical lamina necrosis. Okay. Now coming to the T2 weighted imaging feature. So what will you get in T2 weighted imaging? You are going to see bright areas. Why do you get bright area? It is due to vasogenic edema. To begin with cytotoxic, later it shifts to vasogenic edema with the breakage of blood brain barrier. There is mass effect, okay? There is mass effect as well as increase in edema. So hyper intensity. Now, let's see another feature of subacute infarct. That is known as the that is known as the fogging effect. We have already discussed about fogging effect in imaging of subacute infarct in CT. Why do you get fogging effect? Here, what happens is in subacute stage, the brain tries to contain the damage. Why? Right? By proliferation of capillaries. Capillaries will increase. RBC will come out. WBC will come out. Which WBC? Macrophages. What are lipid laden? Macrophages will come out. And more importantly, there is decrease in edema. All these factors will together do what? Decrease the signal intensity. So when the edema decreases, what happens? T2 signal also comes down. So the brain looks apparently normal. See, to begin with, it was bright. See, bright here. Now what is happening? There is no significant abnormality apparent on MRI. Fogging effect. That's yet another feature that we expect in subacute T2. Now let's move on to flare. What is the peculiarity of flare? Flare is a modification of T2 weighted imaging. What you are doing? You are suppressing the CSF. You are suppressing the CSF. Look, in the ventricles, the CSF should be there in T2. It, will sh it should appear bright. Hyper intense. Why it is a fluid? So in flare, fluid attenuating. Fluid is suppressed. So what will happen? The edema too decreases to some extent. So you can better see. So initially there would be hyper intensity. That is due to the vasogenic edema. It is not completely suppressed. Okay. But better than CSF, better than T2 image, you can appreciate the hyper intensity in flare because the CSF signal is being suppressed here. Okay. Then what happens? Again, the fogging effect will set in. What will you get? You will get the fogging effect. We have already seen the fogging effect, the cause of fogging effect. So initially hyper intensity, that is due to vasogenic edema. And it stands out in flare image because you are getting suppression of signal of CSR from the normal sulcal spaces and from the ventricles. Okay. So initially there is hyper intensity and over time, over time what is happening? As the brain is trying to decrease edema, there is apparently the flare appears normal. That is known as fogging effect. So hyperintensity and fogging, you can see both in T2 and flare. Now I am going to give contrast study. So, so these are the normal sequences that you take in MRI brain. T1, we saw the appearance of subject in T2, flare. Then we are going to give post contrast. IV, gadolinium. What is the contrast used? We are going to give gadolinium. So what happens to normal brain parenchyma when you are giving IV contrast? It will not enhance. Why? There is a good blood brain barrier. Only those tissues, structures out of blood brain barrier will enhance. They are known as circumventricular organs. Okay. Only those outside will normally enhance. So what happens in infarct? I said cytotoxic edema. Later it progresses to vasogenic edema with the breakage of blood brain barrier. You are getting breakage of blood brain barrier. And what will you get? You will get leakage of whatever gadolinium that you are giving intravascular. So you are giving gadolinium that will come out. And that will go to where? The pathological side. Where is the pathology? The gyri, the cortex and the underneath white matter. The gyra is affected. So what? how will it enhance? It will enhance in a gyriform pattern, serpentine pattern. So this is characteristic feature of subacute infarct. Now, what other enhancement can you get? You can get meningeal enhancement. Why meningeal enhancement? You have got an infarct. That area, what is happening? The body is trying to salvage by putting in collaterals. So, the leaky vessels, WBC is com coming out, RBC is coming out. There is some sort of an inflammation. So, the overlying meningeal meninges will get inflamed. So, that is one reason. Overlying meninges will get inflamed and there is Reactive hyperemia. There is got reactive hyperemia. That is one reason. Then what else? 
subacute stage is a stage where there is collateral vessels are coming so there is increase in the pile collaterals what is pile pile is a meningeal layer pile matter so pile collaterals will increase so with giving contrast what will happen they will enhance so the question comes we have seen the appearance so how will it appear that question has been answered how it will appear that we have answered now when will you see it so guiding from enhancement you can see it as early as 2 to 3 days and it can last as long as 2 to 3 months that's very important so you are imagining a patient after 2 to 3 months of infarct if you still get this enhancement that's okay it implies a guiding from enhancement of the infarct okay now what about the leptomeningeal enhancement how long can you can it last it is seen within one week okay one week by one week it will disappear okay these are the important points that you should know in subacute stage in contrasting now about the uh, GRE imaging gradient imaging we have already seen in previous le lecture in detail about the GRE image it's going in far so what is GRE basically it enhances the substances that show magnetic susceptibility or magnetic inhomogeneity one such substance is what the hemorrhage so the hemorrhage will be brought off beautifully the hemorrhagic transformation will be brought off beauty beautifully in GRE image how will it appear it appears as black area black areas are known as blooming areas known as blooming areas now let's take a moment and learn about role of diffusion weight imaging in subacute infarct. So we have seen its importance in acute infarct. Early detection, very important. It should appear bright on trace diffusion imaging and it should show low signal on ADC. So this appearance, bright on trace diffusion imaging, low signal on ADC map. That shows its case of acute infarct. Now, what will happen in subacute stage or as the time progresses? As the time progresses, the low signal in ADC will come down. The low signal in ADC will come down and almost appear as normal. So, look at the image in subacute stage. What will you still get in trace diffusion image? Trace diffusion image still appears bright. But what happens to ADC? The blackness has decreased in intensity. So you have to take double or triple looks to say whether is there a signal drop? Is there a signal drop? So which means that over time. So what time? What time specifically? After about one week. By the end of one week of insult of infarct. Okay. Stroke. Ischemic stroke. ADC price looks apparently normal. Apparently normal. What do you call that? Pseudo normalization. What do you call that? Pseudo normalization. So let's look for an explanation for this. What do you see here? This is the initial stage of cytotoxic edema. Cytotoxic edema. So we have already seen that the diffusion restriction is due to cytotoxic edema. What happens? The pump phase water from extracellular space comes in. So what is the problem? We know that the extracellular space has got water which is freely diffusible. Freely diffusible. Very important. Now it crosses and enters the cell. What happens to this water? There is a lot of hindrance to this water within the cell. Why? You have got organelles. Lots and lots of organelles. Macromolecules. Nucleus. So these will impede the movement of water. That is why the water which has come into the cell from the outside, it is not, not freely diffusible. Hence, you get diffusion restriction. That is hyper on T, sorry, hyper on diffusion weighted and low on ADC. Now, what is going to happen? As the time progresses, is the cell going to remain like that? No. Cell can no longer take it. Cell will burst. There would be lysis. So, what happens to these water molecules? From the inside, they go back to the extracellular space. So, back to the extracellular space. So, what are within the extracellular space is diffusible. So, when the ADC is looking at this, what does the ADC see? There is increase in the diffusible water in the extracellular space because it has moved out. So, there is facilitated diffusion. So, ADC measures what the true value of diffusion, right? 
So as far as ADC is concerned, there is no restriction of motion of the water molecule. So ADC will apparently show normal. That is known as pseudo normalization of ADC. But the diffusion weighted images. What is the peculiarity of diffusion weighted imaging? It has got the diffusion property as well as the T2 effect. So for the diffusion component, what is happening? Facilitated diffusion is there. But what about the T2 effect? Water molecule has got long T2 relaxation time. So long effect. So what will happen? It will appear bright on diffusion. So remember, by the end of one week, ABC signal almost comes back to normal. But when at that time, the diffusion weighted imaging is still bright. That is known as pseudo normalization. But will the diffusion weighted image, its desert signal come down? Yes. It takes about 10 to 15 days for the diffusion weighted image to reverse its signal back to normal. So that's very important. Now let's go over to the chronic infarct. We have done with subacute, now going to the chronic infarct. Only three important things that you need to know. We have already seen the appearance of chronic infarct in CT. What is it? It's appearing black. Why black? The brain tissue is dead, replaced by gliosis, there is liquefaction. Water in CT, dark. Now, what happens in MRI, in T2-weighted sequences? Water has long T2 relaxation time. So, what will appear? It appears bright. And what else? The brain is dead and liquefied. That means loss in volume. So, there is thinning. There is, there is evident volume loss. So, you are getting volume loss. And you are getting T2 high signal. Now, if I take the flare image, as I already say, said, flare image suppresses the fluid. So, what do you see? There is a brain tissue loss that is very apparent and what is happening with the bright signal seen in T2? It has been suppressed. The so CSF has been suppressed. So fluid is suppressed in flare images. So this shows that the brain is liquefied. Loss of volume and liquefied. That is known as encephalomalacia. So what do you expect in chronic info? Encephalomalacia. And how it will go? It is a going, going for a territorial boundary. The encephalomalacia forms a vascular territory. territory. So you can confirm that this insult is due to an ischemic condition. So any brain damaged brain will undergo liquefaction. So how can you attribute it to infarct based on previous history, correlate with history and also see that whether it is following a vascular territory. Now let's see another interesting phenomenon in chronic infarct. So that is known as the well-aryan degeneration. Well-aryan degeneration. So does that ring a bell? Yes, we have learned extensively about well-aryan degeneration back in our physiology days. But we never ever expected that you will come and stare at back at you in your clinical practice. So that's the importance of basic subjects, right? These are the base. So they keep on coming in your daily life. Now let's see what is going to happen. First let's take Wellerian degeneration. What do you mean by Wellerian degeneration? If you transect a nerve distal to the site of injury, the nerve will undergo degeneration. It is distal to the site of injury. Injury, the axon and myelin sheet will undergo degeneration. So the same is going to happen here. Are you you're going to get an injury to the nerve? Nerve means what? You're getting infarct of the cortex. Cortical infarct is an injury. So what is happening? Death. So for the what does the cortex has? Cortex has got many layers, and it has got what the cell body, the nucleus, the cell body of these neurons are in the cortex. So you're getting an injury there. So what happens? Distally, there is degeneration. So, the axons of the neurons are traversing down the corticospinal tract. Down the corticospinal tract, the motor tract. So, what will you get? So, you can see in the figure, you are getting hyperintensity and atrophy. What is the structure? This is the midbrain. What does the midbrain have? Midbrain has got the cerebral peduncle. And what does the cerebral peduncle have? It traverses the corticospinal tract. The corticospinal tract traverses through the cerebral peduncle. So compare the right side and the left cerebral peduncle. What is striking there? You can see that the right cerebral peduncle has decreased in size, width. So at the same time, you can get bright signal. So increase in signal along with atrophy. That is the feature of Wellerian degeneration. You can get increased signal along the corticospinal tract. You can get atrophy of the cerebral peduncle with increased signal. That is known as the Wellerian degeneration. It's an important feature is seen in chronic infarct. Now let's go to so as you can see, hyperintensity atrophy. Now let's go to the last feature, which is 
known as closed cerebellar diastasis. The name is very fancy. Let's see what it means. Crossed means opposite. Cerebellum, of course, it's cerebellum. So, what do you mean by diastasis? Diastasis is a condition where there is decrease in the function, decrease in the metabolism, and decrease in the perfusion. So, it means that there is decrease in the function, metabolism, and perfusion of the cerebellum. So, you get a lesion in the supratendorium, insult in the supratendorium, classically an infant. The change will be depicted on the contralateral cerebellum. Let's see the physiology behind this. So, why do you get cross cerebellar diastasis? You are getting it because the cortico ponto cerebellar fibers are being affected. So, inside in the cortex. What does the cortex contain? Cortex gives origin to the corticospinal tract. Okay, also it gives rise to corticocondyle cerebellar fibers. So, how do they travel? From the cortex, they relay in the bones. And from the bones, where do they go? They will go to the opposite cerebellum, like this, through the middle cerebellar pedangle. So, any insert there, it indirectly will affect the corticopondo cerebellar fi fibers, ultimately affecting our cerebellum. And what will it cause? It will cause decrease in the function, metabolism, and perfusion. So, in chronic impact, this manifests as decrease in the size of cerebellum. So, a question becomes, can it affect crossed cerebellar diastasis? Can it affect in acute stage of impact? Yes. Why? As I said, there is decrease in the perfusion. So, in acute stage, there is decrease in the perfusion. How can you detect it? Will there be structural change at that time? No. You can detect it in perfusion imaging. We shall discuss about perfusion imaging later. And you can also see decrease in the metabolism. Decrease in the metabolism. How can you de detect metabolic change? Go for PET imaging. So, early stage acute infarct, you can see cross cerebellar diastasis by taking perfusion imaging as well as the PET imaging. Okay. So, let's summarize what we have learned today. Regarding the subacute infarct, what all should you remember? Hyperintensity initially, where all T2 and FLEG, that. What do you affect future of subacute infarct? Which all sequences? T2 and FLEG. Okay. Now what else? Cortical lamina necrosis due to lipid laden macrophages. Subacute stage. Which image? T1 weighted image. Gyliform enhancement or leptomeningeal enhancement. Definitely it has to be in the post contrast image. Now hemorrhagic transformation. Where can you can get hemorrhagic transformation? You can get it in GRE as well as in T1 weighted. Both can depict hemorrhagic transformation. Now, we have also learned about the important concept of pseudo-normalization of ADC. Very, very important. Don't forget about pseudo-normalization of ADC. Now, regarding the chronic infarct, we have learned about encephalomalacia, valerian degeneration and crossed cerebellar diastasis. So, I hope this is clear. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for our next lecture, which we shall continue on stroke imaging. Thank you very much.